Bibby's Irish Rose. <laughs> What are you laughing at? What am I laughing? I'm just laughing. What's the matter? There's a log in that. Yes, here it is, folks. Green, America's largest selling shampoo, once again brings you that lovable, laughable show, and Nichols, A.B.'s Irish Rose. Now for tonight's visit with the Murphys and the Levies. Well, since the two fathers have made their New Year's resolutions to stop fighting, they've been pretty good about it. But how long it will last, nobody knows. There is only one fly in the ointment. A.B. is working for Flanagan and Rosenberg in Jersey City. And, worse than that, he has a contract. Solomon needs A.B. in his store. And unless something is done fast, there won't be a Solomon Levy department store. Our scene opens immediately following last week's program. It's the little apartment of Rosemary and Avery, where we find Patrick and Solomon and the Cohen. So, you have a contract for a year, huh? Well, Solomon, are you going to break that contract, Avery? Your father needs you at the Solomon Levy department store, and by jingles, you're coming back to him. Well, don't you suppose I'd rather work for my father than for Flanagan and Rosenberg? But I can't get away, Mr. Murphy. I'm tied up with them for a whole year. Well, by the time we're through with Flanagan and Rosenberg, that contract will be untied by Murphy and Navy. Who it, on? Well, a contract is a contract, Captain. I'm thinking... I'll do your thinking for you. Just leave that to me. I hope you know what you're doing. I do. <laughs> I hope you do. What do you mean by that, Christ? Sense I hope without tracking. <laughs> I didn't mean anything. But I do, Mr. Murphy. Oh, you... <laughs> you do, do you? Yes, I do. I'm not letting you get Solomon into any more trouble. I get him into trouble. I'm only trying to help him out. Why don't you stop that out business? Try to help him in. <laughs> then you'll be doing something? Mama, when you talk to him, shut up. <laughs> now, Mr. Murphy... I'm warning you. As Solomon's lawyer, I'm warning you. You can't make them break a contract. Stay away from the Flanagan and Rosenberg department store. And stay away from Jersey City. You only succeed in making fools of yourself. Yeah. They don't have to leave the Bronx for that. <laughs> Listen, Pep. I appreciate from my heart you wanting to help me out. From the bottom of it, I appreciate it. Well, I do, Charles. I do want to help you. And that comes from the bottom of my heart, too. I know it does, Cap. So, now that your hearts have both reached their bottom, <laughs> let's go home. Well, Cap, I guess home would be more sensible than Jersey City. Dad. Yes, Abel? Dad, I wish I could come back to the store. But I honestly never thought you'd be wanting me back. And there was Rosemary and the twins. I had to take that job. Then. I know, I know, Abel. It ain't your fault. All the fault is mine. I'm sorry. Well, Papa Lady, isn't there something you can do about it until Abel turns from there? Borrow money or something. Anything to keep going. Your contract only runs for a year. A year, she says. The next week they're advising him to go out to bankruptcy. That, Mrs. Cohen, I will never do. I know that, Solomon. I said it to Casey. No, sir. I'll sell my house, my furniture, my everything I got before I'll do that. I want I should pay everything and keep my flags flying. Uh, you're a great man, Solomon. Thank you, sir. Dad. You've always taught me that deeds speak louder than words. Well, to be sure I have. Well, then why don't you do something for Papa Levy? You have a lot of money. Now, why don't you let him have some of it? Well, you listen to that. Why don't I let him have some of my money? Yes, Dad. Why be so stingy listen, about it? Listen, Rosalind. No, I won't listen. I think it's a shame. Look, I... Priscilla, listen. I don't want your Papa's money. He offered it to me today as much as I needed. He did? He did. I did. <laughs> To take the wind out of his sails. But, well, why wouldn't you take it, Papa Levy? He didn't take it because 
because he's a schnuckel. <laughs> Who's a schnuckel? Listen, I didn't refuse the offer because I'm a schnuckel, but because it would be like taking money from my baby. Oh, you think I don't know an honest man when I see it? Sure you do, but you ain't got good sense to throw money away. Who's throwing money away? You're throwing money away, and I ain't going to let you do it. Whose money is it? It's your money, and I'm going to see that you keep it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What's happened to your New Year's resolution? Besides, you two ain't got nothing to fight about. Why, sure we have. I want him to take the money. And I wouldn't do it. You're crazy. And you're a schmageggy, and that's a block in your cough. <laughs> and what? <laughs> oh, perfectly. You know what I said? I said you was cracked in the head. But that ain't your fault. Say, <laughs> certainly not. Maybe when I was a child, they dropped him on it. <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Is that so? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't get mad again. You know something, Pep? I think they dropped me on my head, too. <laughs> oh, Papa Levy, why won't you let Dad help you? Now, listen, Ketchum. No good money should be thrown after bad. A year is a long time to keep on losing business. If they really didn't have that contract, it would be fine. But he's with Flanagan and Rosenberg... I'm... I'm... You understood? Come on, Papa. I want to go home. I am tired, and you should be in bed. She's tired, and I should be in bed. Ain't that something? Come on, Isaac. But I'm not finished here yet. And what do you have to finish? Solomon is finished already. Now, listen, darling. You go on home. I've got to see that Solomon gets into no more trouble. Don't you realize I'm his lawyer? I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't go home until you come along with me. Please, sweetheart. I wouldn't be long. Now, here's your coat. You're tired, darling. So, all right. So, I'll go. I am tired. Sure you are. Good night, Rosalie Nabele. And the rest of you. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night Mama. Good night. I wouldn't be out late, Mama. I'll be glad to see my bed tonight, too. If you're out late, you wouldn't see your bed tonight. <laughs> I'll lock you out. So be home in an hour. Would she really lock you out? Oh, of course she wouldn't. Mama is awfully sweet. Mama can be awfully sour, too. Now, where was we? We were going around in cycles, getting nowhere quick. Abby, what kind of men are Flanagan and Rosenberg? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Murphy, I haven't seen much of either one of them. Well, don't they come to the store? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. They're at the store every day, but I guess I just don't happen to run into them. Well, you met them when they hired you, didn't you? Yes, but that was only for a moment. You see, Stinky Cassidy took me over there because the bank had recommended me. But I always meet all the people in my store and get to know them personal. <laughs> well, Dad, Flanagan and Rosenberg don't. But how can they keep in business? Oh, they have an efficiency expert. He looks after them. And is he over you or under you, is he? I don't know yet. At least he leaves me entirely alone, if that's what you mean. Is it that? I am so mixed up, I don't know what I mean. An efficiency expert. <laughs> In your business, do you have one of those things, Pat? I certainly do. One of the best. Is that so? Who is it? Who is it? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your house, Isaac. Do you think you'll get in all right? Mrs. Cohen gave you an hour to be home, and it's three hours already. Sure. If that was my only worry, I wouldn't worry. It's you, too. Please, I'm begging you. Don't go to Jersey City. Will you promise me that? Will you please stop worrying, Isaac? Go home and get a good night's sleep. I'm needing it, too. Oh, uh, sure, Murray. Come on, Charlie. We can both think better in the morning. You sure you can give him, Isaac? Are you sure Mama wouldn't hand tickle you? Sure, I'm sure. Go home and sleep the cobwebs out of your, from, from your brain. Good night, Isaac. Good night, Mr. Cohen. Good night, boys. Oh, she did it again. Oh. Oh. Well. Mama left. Mama left.
Solomon Levy Department, shot in the Bronx. It wouldn't make any difference if he was Marco Polo. You have to have an appointment. Marcus Polo couldn't make an appointment. He's deaf. <laughs> so is this door. You're not wrong, brother. Did you say something? But I did, it slipped out. You see, no one can see either Mr. Flanagan or Mr. Rosenberg without an appointment. That is one of our very strict rules. In fact, our Mr. Rudel calls it one of our very strictest rules. Yeah, not who is that, Mr. Rudel? 
He's our efficiency expert. But this is an emergency. If it is an emergency, as you say, it is quite within the realm of possibility that I can make an appointment for you by the end of the week. The end of the week will be too late. Right either way, we've got to see you. Have you written the letter? Yes. What letter? First, our Mr. Rudy says you must write a letter. But... Then I take the letter up to our Miss Cavendish. Yes, but... And then our Miss Cavendish consults the calendar. Yes, yes. And then Miss Cavendish informs me whether or not the appointment is possible. Oh, mm-hmm. And then I write a letter back to the parties concerned. The understand. So can't you see that is impossible to do until the end of the week? Oh, it's just me, it's good. Well, can't we cut the red tape and see Miss Cavendish? Oh, no. Sometimes it's necessary for Miss Cavendish to take it up with our Mr. Hatcher. Oh. Then, when that happens, he informs Miss Cavendish and she informs me oh, yeah. before I write the letter. Where is this Mr. Hampshire? If you want to see our Mr. Hampshire, you must have an appointment, too. What about the customers? Do they have to make appointments? Yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Wait. Just a second, please. Young woman, maybe you didn't quite my friend. I am Solomon Levy of the Solomon Levy Department Store in the box. Well, when you write, be sure and use your business letterhead. But... Uh, Sometimes people write in for appointments and don't use the letterhead. Uh, Look, we have... Six instructions to ignore all such correspondence. People who have legitimate business always have proper forms on which to communicate. Well, uh, That's what our Mr. Rudolph always says. Now, one time... Stop it! Stop it! I'm losing my mind. Now then... I'm what? losing mine, too. And it's all the fault of your Mr. Noodle. <laughs> The name is Rudels. What's the difference? Rudels, Rudels, Poodles, Cayudels. He's crazy. <laughs> Never did I hear such a crazy as in the apartment store. Neither did I. Now then, will you go in and send Flanagan and Rosenberg that Murphy and Levy are here to see them? Or do I have to break the door down? If you use that unseemly tone of voice to me, I shall be compelled to call our new general manager, Mr. Abraham Levy. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, no, don't do that. Sir... My instructions are very explicit. Ah. I have been instructed to call on our Mr. Levy whenever I have a problem with which I cannot cope. Oh, listen, girlie, cut out the highfalutin gap. What do you like it? What do you think? Just what you think. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Uh, what's your name? Susan Jones. Uh, well, Susie. What would happen if we told you we had an appointment? Well, if the record showed a bona fide appointment, I would usher you into their presence. And, uh, while the mistake isn't? I would immediately check for a mistake. If the mistake was located, I would apologize to you. You have to talk this way to everybody. And how? Don't you ever get tired making all this explanation? That, sir, is my position. I tire? Certainly. What does Mr. Rudel say? Again, with the Rudel. <laughs> oh, he says it should be a pleasant fatigue. A culmination of an assigned task well done. So says your Mr. Rudel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. But I'd like to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Now could we give him to see Rosenberg and Clevergan? Certainly. Just a moment and I will announce you. You are Mr. A.B.'s father. And you're Rosemary's father? Yes. How did you know that? Oh, Mr. Avery told me all about you. Then why did you hand us that line? Mr. Zoodle. Oh, oh you know. I don't make the rules, but I do my best to keep them. <laughs> yeah, you're cute. Empty <laughs> tap. <laughs> and Francis is pretty as a matter of Ireland. Oh, but I'm not Irish, Mr. Murphy. Oh. I'm Russian. <laughs> that is, Russian descent. And you look it. Just like I do. <laughs> Don't you, Pep? Well, no, she may be Russian and look it, but her face is certainly prettier than your map. And that's no lie. Oh, well, uh, gentlemen, when you wrote for your appointment... But, uh, she, uh, she didn't write. Well, it's just for my records, you know. Did, uh, did you use your letterhead? Oh, for the records. Well, uh, if we didn't, we certainly will the next time. <laughs> We 
wonder what Patrick and Solomon will find when they meet Flanagan and Rosenberg. In just a moment, we'll take you back to them. But first, hey, are you bothered about removing ugly, scaly dandruff? You won't be when you shampoo with Special Dreams. Because Special Dreams Super Cleansing Action removes that flaky dandruff the very first time you use it. And besides, does something else. Something far more important. And something no soap shampoo can do. Not even those claiming to be dandruff removers. Special Dream reveals up to 33% more luster than any soap or soap shampoo. Because it never leaves any dulling film on hair. As soaps always do to dim the natural beauty. And so here's something else. Now that Special Dream has been improved with added hair conditioner, it leaves hair far silkier, smoother, and easier to manage right after shampooing. We know of no other shampoo that gives you all these beauty benefits. So before you wash your hair another time, buy a bottle of this wonderful improved shampoo. Ask for it by its full name, Special Dream with Hair Conditioner. Now that's important, so remember... Special Dream with Hair Conditioner. And now back to Amy's Irish Rose. It's immediately following the last scene, and uh, Miss Jones is announcing Solomon and Patrick to Flanagan and Rosenberg. To gentlemen to see you gentlemen. They say to come right in and start going straight ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't stop to think it. Come on, Sergeant. Well, that's it. Oh, I've grown that the card I was waiting for. That gins me. Well, I'll be doggone. That's the fourth time you've gone and done it. And you have three frames to boot. I have uh, simply luck. Nothing but luck. I never can figure the proper card to play. I am. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, uh, good morning. Come right in and... Have a seat. Uh, Want to make it double? Doubles? What is that double? Gin rummy. Double. Wonderful game. Simply wonderful. Well, uh, I kind of came out, didn't uh, Maybe your friend would like to play. Oh, no, play to us, no, no, no. oh that's too bad. I'm, uh... <clears throat> I'm Flanagan. Flanagan. I'm Rosenberg. Rosenberg? Uh, I didn't quite catch your name. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm uh, Solomon Levy of the Solomon Levy Department Store in the Bronx. And I'm Patrick Joseph Murphy. Of the uh, Solomon Levy Department Store of the Bronx? No, do I look like I belong to the Solomon Levy Department Store? What's the matter with the Solomon Levy Department Store? Oh, no, nothing, nothing, sir. Now, don't get excited. Uh, you sure you won't play a hand of Jim? Sure wish you would. Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I got some very important business with you. Business? With us? Go on, Charles, tell him. I want that you should sell me a contract. Oh, we don't understand. I want to buy the contract that you have with A.B. Levy. Uh, <clears throat> we are very definitely... Not interested. Please, don't say that. A.B. is my son. I need him in my business. Without him, I would be a very sick and an ill man. Oh, that's all, gentlemen. Mr. Levy needs him desperately. We are not interested. Uh, we don't care whether he lives or dies. <clears throat> uh, it's your deal, Flanagan. Uh, no, sir, no. It's your deal, Rosenberg. Uh, you just won. Oh, that's right. So I did. Uh, give me the car. Now, wait a minute, you two. Don't try giving us the brush off. Uh, Flanagan, uh, cut the car. Sure enough, sir. Do you hear me? Don't try ignoring it. We know all about the Solomon Levy department store. Yeah, we get reports on everything. Yes, the Solomon Levy store is about to go under. Solomon Levy ain't got no money to buy anything. Let alone a contract. Is that so? Sure, so... Uh, Why should we be interested in selling anything? When we could buy you and say... Hmm. Is that so? Is that so? Well, let me tell you something. I could buy you and keep you. I wouldn't have to tell you. Brave talk from, uh... Slight people. Slight people, eh? Blue eh? Well, see if this sounds like slight people. I could buy out the whole shebang. I could write a check for the whole world. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> Rosenberg, deal the car. Yes, yeah, Mr. Flanagan. I'd be delighted. Stop the car, man! Be quiet. Oh, that's right. Don't make me lose count. You don't think I can, do you? Uh, do what? Buy a whole outfit with a single check. Put up or shut up. Uh, well said, Rosenberg. Thank you, sir. How much do you want for it? Yes, sir, don't be careful. Let me alone. I'll show them how straight you are. 
I'll buy their whole jump and then swing them by the ankles till I knock the walls out. Uh, take a card, Flanagan. Yes, I already took it. Uh, yeah, this is my discount. Oh, oh, sure enough. Answer me. How much do you want for it? You're buying it. You write the check. Wait a minute, Pep. Don't take out your checkbook. They don't talk and I'll take out my checkbook. They can't tell me to put up a shut up. Pep, you're acting crazy. I see. We knew you all were bluffing. No, it's just an act. Oh, so you think we're bluffing, eh? Huh? I'm asking for the last time. How much do you want? Well, sir, we're sporting men. Just to see if you're bluffing or not, we'll take 10000 providing you sign this paper, assuming a few small debts. For which we'll give you this share bill of sale, which, by a strange coincidence, I happen to have in my pocket right here. Otherwise... Shut up and uh, get out. I'll show you who'll shut up and get out. Here. Here's ten thousand. Patrick Joseph Morton. Here, sign. Give me that bill of sale. Uh, no, no. First sign. I'll sign anything. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Now get out. Get out before I throw you out. Oh, good. It's Flanagan. Now we all can go back down home. Uh, yo, no. Patrickle, Patrickle, you shouldn't have done that. Goodbye, you all. I go out. Oh, this is terrible. You shouldn't lose your temper like that, Pam. What happened? What happened? What happened? You got mad and bobbed the store. That's what happened. Well, with two stores on their hands, it looks as though Murphy and Levy are in business. But there's only one A.B. Well, now be sure to listen again next Saturday night at the same time for another episode of the Murphys, the Levies, and their friends. A.B.'s Irish Rose is dedicated to the spirit of freedom and equality which gives to this nation the greatness that is America. A.B.'s Irish Rose is written by Ann Nichols and brought to you by Procter & Gamble, the makers of Dream, America's largest selling shampoo. This is Howard Petrie. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> 